Are you tired of watching boring old press releases? Then you've come to the right place, the right channel, the number one channel for CEO interviews and company overviews. Welcome to Rich TV Live. Subscribe to our channel and make sure to hit the like button on our videos to help with the YouTube algorithm. For more information and in-depth discussions and analysis, join our trading club at richpigsdaily.com. And don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell for notifications to get alerted when our next CEO interview is released so you can discover the next 10 bagger. everybody doing today i am your host rich here on behalf of rich tv live with our very special guest the ceo of indiva limited neil Moroda. how are you doing today neil i'm well how are you rich i'm fantastic very excited to have you guys on the show again we've interviewed you guys a few times in the past all you guys got to do if you want to see the previous videos is search indiva rich tv live and they will pop up on youtube and love to get some updates on how things are going, Neil. Can you tell us a little bit about yourself and how you got involved with Indiva Limited? Uh, sure. I, I was one of the original co-founders of Indiva. I'm the president and CEO. Um, uh, you know, my background is really in capital markets. And uh, when this industry uh, was changing dramatically, you know, seven or eight years ago, it sparked my interest, uh, no pun intended. Uh, and then I also had uh, friends and family that were medical users. Uh, and so I felt sort of a personal connection as well. Uh, fast forward to six years later, and we're the number one edibles company in Canada by quite a margin. Wow. Congratulations. Thank you. That's a serious, serious statement because there's so much competition in Canada in this space. So to be able to say that you're number one is a huge feather in your cap. Now, can you go through some of the milestones that were hit in the first six months of this year and what the main goals are for the last six months of 2021 for Indiva Limited. Yeah, so so far this year, uh, we're about to report Q2 later this month. Uh, we gave guidance in our, in our first quarter that we expect record revenue and significant improvement in margins. Uh, we stand by that guidance. So very excited to report Q2. Uh, the business is growing sequentially. Uh, we hope that will continue throughout the rest of the year. We expect it to. Our year-over-year -year growth is, is you know, off the charts tremendous. And that's really been driven by the introduction of, of Wana Gummies last year and Bang Chocolate. So uh, September will mark the one-year anniversary of having Wana Gummies in market. Uh, we have well over 50% market share in edibles and in the gummies category specifically. Wow. Uh, so we're very excited. And, and uh, you know, what I would like to say is that we got here organically. Uh, we didn't go out and buy other LPs to get this market share. We earned it the hard way um, and the old fashioned way by introducing great products that customers love. Uh, we expect to keep doing that uh, as the rest of the year unfolds and beyond. That's great. I love it. Growing organically is always one of the greatest ways to build shareholder and customer loyalty. So you guys have obviously done a great job. Now, Neil, can you tell us about your management team and directors? We think it's extremely important to understand who's behind the deals, especially their past success in the public markets. Sure. Yeah. So, I mean, uh, I would say both our management team uh, and our, our board has deep experience in public markets. Uh, personally, myself, I've served on uh, several boards and worked inside public companies that have been involved in capital markets for uh, almost 25 years. Um, you know, been involved in companies that were taken out, uh, raised hundreds of millions of dollars inside companies and for companies in my investment banking days. Uh, you know, going down the rest of the team, our CFO, also has been heavily involved in, in public companies. Uh, our chief commercial officer also has, has been involved uh, in companies uh, like the, the beer store, Major League Baseball. Uh, it was involved in the cannabis space before joining us, thankfully, a couple of years ago. Uh, he's been instrumental in driving uh, our growth. Uh, our management team at the facility are deeply experienced in consumer packaged goods, and, and that's gone a long way. Uh, we're actually number three nationally. We're a top 10 LP, again, wow. getting here organically. Uh, we're number three as measured by units. Uh, and that takes a certain skill set to be able to, you know, uh, produce and sell a million units a month or, or, or in and about that number. Uh, so uh, on our board, uh, in terms of public uh, companies, uh, one of our directors was a founder of Betricam. 
uh, that was sold to Canopy several years ago. Uh, Russell Wilson recently joined our board. Uh, he was a director of uh, uh, Inner Spirit, which owns all the Spirit Leaf stores. Uh, that was just sold to Sundial. Uh, so we have deep experience in the management board level in public markets uh, and, uh, and the transactions that you know, tend to accompany public companies, capital raises, M&A, et cetera. Congratulations on adding Russell Wilson. I, it's funny, I saw him on your press release. I'm like, is, is this the Russell Wilson? I'm like, it must be. And you just, uh, you just mentioned I'm a huge fan of his. I'm here in Vancouver, so obviously very close to Seattle where he's been playing and he's been a you know, championship quarterback. So that is a huge, huge, huge celebrity endorsement. Yeah, it, it Russell Wilson. different Russell Wilson. I'm sorry to interrupt you, but uh, Russell uh, works in Prairie Merchant uh, uh, Corporation. He's not a football player. So, oh, okay. Uh, I thought you meant Russell Wilson, the football player. <laughs> Common name, but... Uh, you know, I, listen, uh, I, I, this is the only Russell Wilson I know. So <laughs> fantastic. Well, you know what? Can you tell us a little bit of a Russell Wilson then? So since I got him a little confused, which Russell? Sure. Yeah. Yeah. He's uh, he, he's uh, uh, an executive with Prairie Merchant, uh, which is a firm that's owned by Brett Wilson, uh, who uh, oh, yes. are familiar with in Canada. Uh, you know, a uh, very successful entrepreneur. Uh, Previous Dragon, right. correct? That, that's right. Yeah. Brett Wilson. And, uh, yes. Yeah. They, they're big shareholders of Indiva. They own about 10% of the company. Wow. Um, and so, yeah, we're very happy to have Russell and, and his experience in the industry and uh, on the board with us. Very good. Very good. That's a very strong member to add to your team. Now, Neil, can you give our viewers an idea of how many storefronts and online stores carry your products and what other markets the company is planning on getting into over the next year? Yeah, we're, we are currently in nine provinces and two territories in, in Canada. Uh, we're trying to get into PEI, and that would really make us coast to coast, uh, with the exception none of it, of course. Uh, and uh, right now, we're, there's close to 2,000 stores in Canada, and we estimate our store penetration uh, at about 70% of stores having at least one Indiva product in it. So part of our growth um, isn't necessarily a new markets. Uh, we are looking at export opportunities. We think those markets are, are young and a bit tiny uh, relative to the big opportunity that we still see in Canada. Uh, but part of our challenge isn't necessarily just to get to 100% penetration of stores, that would be great, but also to increase uh, the total number of SKUs we have per store. So there's a lot of different levers to continue the strong growth that we've been seeing. Now, the cannabis sector is a very fast growing sector, not just in Canada, but in the United States and internationally, and it's become very competitive. So if Indiva Limited were to compare itself to its competitors in this sector, what would say what would you say sets you guys apart? I think it's a couple of things. One, we've touched on this very briefly, but we've gotten to this market share again, being a top ten LP, uh, being the number one edible producer and distributor. Um, uh, we've gotten here organically uh, through one facility. Uh, we did not go down the path of uh, building scale before we've proven out our products. Uh, we never got involved in scale grow. So we're a bit of a different story uh, with a, a heavier focus, let's say, on, on processing and, and product manufacturing. Uh, the other thing I think that we've done very well has been quite disciplined with capital. Uh, you know, we've never bought big facilities and had to write them off. You know, we didn't, uh, we didn't make any ventures into uh, other continents or countries and, and, and have any write-offs related to that. It's been really a nuts and bolts growth story uh, from the ground up uh, in our one facility in London, Ontario. And and it's proved successful. Our uh, customers love our products. Uh, every time I visit dispensaries uh, and ask, you know, what's your favorite uh, product? Wana is, uh, and Bang are regularly named as favorites of the bud tenders. So our customers love the products. Our clients love the products. Um, and uh, look, I think our stock is really undervalued. We can touch on that. But uh, I would rather have an undervalued stock and products that people love than the other way around. Uh, so we're, we're very bullish on where we're going to go from here. I agree with you. We here at Rich TV Live, we love to find undervalued, underappreciated, underexposed, super hyper growth stories. We've done it before. We will do it again. And in order to do that, we love to understand the fundamentals of the company. We've talked about your management team. We've talked about what sets you guys apart. We've talked about your products and where you're located and what your plans are uh, for the future. Can you talk a little bit about your share structure and how the company plans to attract more institutional alongside retail investors? Sure. Uh, we have about 136 million shares outstanding today, which would put our market cap at just over 50 million. 
Wow. Uh, that's a very low number. Uh, yes. You know, our market share is above um, seven acres, uh, which was previously owned by Supreme and is now owned by uh, Canopy. I believe they were taken out for 400 million. Uh, yeah. So there's quite a quite a difference, uh, well, a Grand Canyon and difference in valuations. Uh, our path to profitability is also looking pretty good. Uh, really? We run a tight ship here. Our quarterly j and is, you know, two to two and a half million, uh, not 10 or 20 million. So, you know, as we, our revenue uh, approaches, let's say 40 million on an annual basis, which is where we would expect to get to this year. Wow. Uh, and if our margins improve, we should be EBITDA positive uh, sooner than later. Um, so, uh, yeah, I mean, I, I, I think in terms of attracting institutions, I mean, I was previously an institutional investor and fund manager uh, with a big firm in Boston uh, called Fidelity that most people might be aware of. Uh, and so I think we're turning the corner in terms of showing profitable growth, not just top line growth. Uh, and we're getting more attention from the brokerage community. So uh, I would expect at some point we'll see some research uh, put out on Indiva. It's been very thin. Uh, so between the, the research and building the awareness and and growing it profitably, I think that will attract institutions. I agree 100 percent. And a $40 million run rate for a stock at 40 cents with 136 million shares issued and outstanding and potentially being EBITDA positive. Definitely, in my opinion, when you say a 50 million market cap, I mean, if you have a 50 million market cap and you're doing 40 million a year, I mean, you're very undervalued in my opinion. So I yeah, think the upside yeah. could be tremendous for investors. Now, remember guys, Rich TV Live is strictly for information and education purposes. Please do your due diligence, do your research before you invest in anything that we talk about here in Rich TV Live. In saying that, we do have a great track record of identifying undervalued companies before they explode. And this seems like it's fitting, it's fitting the bill really, really well. If there was one thing, Neil, that you would want shareholders to know about Indiva Limited today, what would that be? Well, that our results uh, keep getting better. Uh, we just refreshed our investor deck uh, to include uh, July market share numbers, which continue to climb. Uh, so despite all the tough competition uh, and companies that, uh, you know, let's say are even more uh, well capitalized than we are, uh, we absolutely punch above our weight. And uh, I, would, I would guide people to expect, uh, you know, record revenue in Q2, as we as we uh, guided to, that we're we're standing by that and substantial improvement in margins. Uh, and I would encourage people to uh, look around at the rest of the industry and and some of the valuations that have been paid for recent takeovers. Uh, you know, look at the valuation of Indiva uh, and and look at where we're going in terms of revenue and profitability. Uh, and I think uh, people will see that this is this is a, maybe an overlooked story. Uh, but we're really hitting our stride now and uh, people should have a look and, and stay tuned for our Q2 earnings later this month. That sounds great. I'm really looking forward to those earnings. I'll be watching them very, very closely and so will our community. If an investor, and there's going to be a potentially 100 countries that will see this interview and this video with investors from all over the world, what would be the best way for those potential investors or shareholders to get in touch with the company if they have any questions? You can reach out to our IR manager, uh, Anthony Simone, his, uh, at ir at indiva.com. Uh, his uh, uh, contact details are also in our presentation and in our press releases. Uh, they can reach out to me directly, neil at indiva.com. Uh, always happy to chat with investors uh, and go to our website, uh, indiva.com, uh, for lots of information about our products, our investor presentation, and all of our past press releases, financials, etc. It's a great deal of information there for investors to look at. Fantastic. Thank you so much for your time today. Neil Morota, the CEO of Indiva Limited. Thank you for joining us today, Neil. My pleasure. Thanks for having me, Rich. Always a pleasure. Now, for those of you guys that are watching, if you like the video, please smash the like button, comment down below, share the video everywhere, and subscribe if you're live. Now, remember, if you're not winning, you're probably not watching. We bring you the winners, and we bring them for you first. Thank you for watching, everybody, and have a nice day.